brand new pre-order information regarding the PlayStation 5 drops, plus new details on backwards compatibility leaks. First PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to DualShock 4 size comparisons revealed, and brand new information regarding PlayStation 5's hit, Spider-Man Miles Morales. All this and much, much more in today's saltiest PlayStation 5 news report. Let's get into it. What's up, my fellow gamers? It's Saltiest Gaming, and we're back with another PlayStation 5 video. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. Last week, there was a rumor going around that PlayStation pre-orders were going to go live at 1230 Pacific on July 13th. But lo and behold, those rumors were wrong. A lot of people were waiting at their computer screens like myself, just waiting to click on that pre-order button when it was available and to figure out when the prices were. But like I said, that information turned out to be false. According to a news report, the PlayStation 5 pre-orders won't happen with a minute's notice, says Eric Lempil. Eric is the senior vice president of marketing and head of PlayStation Network. His statement came during an interview with Jeff Keighley. They were doing a showcase of the DualSense controller. And after a number of serious rumors swirled earlier, like I said, he had to address the situation in the interview. And he said this. And let's talk a bit about that because you guys had the, the big event, so many great titles, uh, I think. Gamers are very excited about PS5. I think we saw even this week there were rumors that uh, pre-orders were happening and the Twitter lit up. I don't know where these rumors start, but I have to ask you, like, is are, are you about to press the button now for pre-orders? Like, yeah. when can we expect to get our PS5? No, de definitely not now. We, we don't know what happened there. We had nothing to do with it. I got a, a message from someone saying people are lining up at stores, and, and, and we had no idea why. Um, so I, I think it's safe to say, you know, for all of your viewers, we'll let you know when pre-order will happen. We will let you know, it, it's not gonna happen with a minute's notice. We're, we're going to, at some point, let you know when you can pre-order a PlayStation 5. So um, please don't feel like you have to go run out and, and line up anywhere until you receive official notice on how that'll work. So um, I don't know how that happened, don't know who did it, wasn't us though. So. This is awesome news for PlayStation fans because it will give us a time and a date that we can look forward to pre-ordering. We can get all of our ducks in a row. I did a video talking about the supply of the PlayStation 5 and how Sony has actually doubled the supply for the upcoming fall. And this is a great news when it comes to the people that want to get their hands on a PlayStation 5 this upcoming fall. Also, there's interesting information regarding how many PlayStation 5s you can purchase when it comes to the PlayStation official store. Roberto Serrano, Geronimo73 on Twitter, found some information in the PlayStation store, specifically in the code, the script code, and he found this information regarding how many PlayStation 5s you can order at a time. Warning, this is a message in the script code, so you need to take it with a grain of salt. It says this, you can purchase only one version of the PlayStation 5 console, disc or digital. You have already added one PlayStation 5 console to your cart. So that was in the code. And this is from the Sony PlayStation Store. So this doesn't mean that all retailers will have this. And this doesn't even mean that the PlayStation Store will have this. This is just in the code. So you need to take it with a hashtag grain of salt. But I think this would be a good thing for consumers because it would limit the amount of PlayStations that one could order at a time, specifically when the, the PlayStation pre-orders drop. So if you're going into a store online, Line, you're trying to buy a PlayStation, you can't just snatch up 10 of them at once. You'd have to be limited to one, either the digital or the regular PlayStation 5. I think this would be good for average consumers that want to get their hands on one. They don't want to be left at the mercy of these online scalpers that will try to take advantage of them when it comes to the price of the PlayStation if they don't get their hands on it. So this is the information regarding the PlayStation pre-orders. I fully expect pre-orders to go live in August. At some point, I think PlayStation will 
reveal their price after Xbox. I think Xbox is going to have their event on July 23rd. Then they'll do another event for the Lockhart and the multiplayer for Halo. And at that time, they'll reveal their price and then PlayStation will follow suit. I fully expect the price to be reasonable and not anywhere above $500 US. Moving on, Roberto Serrano also had some information early this morning. I was still up because I'm an insomniac. He had some information regarding the PlayStation 5 backwards compatibility. This information also comes from the source code at the PlayStation Store. So take it with a grain of salt. But according to the official direct PlayStation Store, all PlayStation hits and latest PlayStation 4 exclusives will be PlayStation 5 compatible. White and blue badges were placeholders hidden like other ones of the product in the website to be ready for announcement. You can see the source code in the description. I'll link that. It's kind of a lot of jargon going on there, but this is interesting because it means that all PlayStation 4 games will be compatible, including the PlayStation hits and PS4 exclusives. So to all those people that think that there's only going to be 100 PlayStation 4 games available for backwards compatibility, this directly goes against that. And I fully expected this as well. There's some rumors out there for full backwards compatibility. We haven't heard anything about that as of yet. There is that patent that Sony put in for the cloud-based backwards compatibility. But until they say something officially, that's just rumors and you got to take it with a grain of salt. Like I was saying, Jeff Keighley was doing a reveal of the DualSense controller, a size comparison. He's been doing the Summer Games Fest showcase and every day he's had a new person on or new thing to showcase when it comes to video games. During this time, Jeff showed off the PlayStation 5's new controller, the DualSense, and he gave in a direct comparison, a size comparison between the DualSense and the DualShock 4. There were some fake images floating around the internet that were made by some people in Photoshop that made this controller look absolutely huge, look like a boomerang, look like you could throw this thing around a mountain and it'd come back to you. But those ended up being fake because if you look at the side-by-side -side comparisons with the DualShock, it's a little bit bigger, you know, vertically, and it's a lot beefier. He talked about how it's more weightier, but seems more well-built. You know, he showed off some other things, which I, I thought overall was just kind of a waste of time. He was showing that you can blow into the PlayStation 5's DualSense, and that's already become a meme. I put out a video there. You guys go check it out on my Twitter. It's like if you blow into the DualSense wrong, it turns into this transformer that starts shooting at you. So anyway, go check that out. But overall, I'm happy with the size and the shape and the ergonomics of this controller. I can't wait to get my hands on it, honestly, because I like the DualShock 4. I prefer that controller over an Xbox controller. It's just a lot lighter. I don't have a problem with the, the sticks being at the same position. Some people have a problem with that. Anyway, I just think that this controller is going to be awesome. It has the speaker that you can talk into. You can blow into it. You know, that's the best feature that I've ever seen. Right, right, right. The biggest thing that I want to know is how much this controller is going to cost. There's rumors out there that this thing is going to be like 70, 80 bucks. I don't know about that. I think that they can keep the cost the same. It looks more futuristic, but it doesn't need to have that futuristic price. But until Sony comes out and says something, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Moving on, according to the UK sales charts ending July 18th, Ghost of Tsushima finished number one, followed by Paper Mario, the Origami King. Both of these games came out the same time and Nintendo's very popular platform and traditionally when they put a game out it is number one no question about it Mario is one of their pillar franchises but Ghost of Tsushima has come out on top there's a list here that I'll pop up on the screen real quick the top five are Ghost of Tsushima Paper Mario the Origami King F1 2020 Animal Crossing New Horizons and The Last of Us Part 2 rounds out the top five so bravo to Sucker Punch their game is amazing that's the gameplay that I have in the background and I cannot wait to get into this game more I was trying to play last night. My kid woke up. She's teething. I was streaming it on my Twitch. Go check that out. Twitch.tv slash saltiest gaming. The game is amazing. It's my game of the year, honestly. And that's crazy to say because The Last of Us 2 was so good. But man, Sucker Punch hit this out the park. I think it was lowly rated on Metacritic. I honestly think this thing should be in the 90s. I think it's better than The Witcher 3 when it comes to gameplay and story and music and everything else. And The Witcher was up there in the mid 90s. We shall see with this game. Game. We'll see if it gets nominated for game of the year, but man, it is doing well when it comes to the sales charts. And I think it's going to track about 3 million probably in the first weekend or so, but we shall see. Make sure to subscribe or follow Benji Sells on Twitter. 
he he keeps up to date with sales information i love to follow his content he was on the salty gaming podcast so give him a look and the last but not least story of the day insomniac games put out an amazing tweet when it comes to the new miles morales spider-man standalone game no it's not a dlc or a glorified dlc like some of these xbox extremists would have you believe this is a standalone game it's going to be awesome they put out a tweet that says this swing through the city like never before on playstation 5 with an optional 4k 60 performance mode Mode, Miles Morales PS5 with the hashtag hashtag Spider-Man PS5. Well, 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 what do we have here? 4K 60 frames per second performance mode. They said it couldn't be done on the PlayStation 5. You know, that RDNA 1.5 system, the hybrid, the thing that doesn't have RDNA 2, according to some of these X bots. Well, 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 we have 4K 60 performance mode. This is something that does not take place on the PlayStation 4. You cannot do this with the base Spider-Man. Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game. No, you play that at 30 frames per second at 1080p, depending on the system you're on. So this is amazing. More than likely, this is a performance mode. You're going to have to turn some of the features off like ray tracing to achieve that. But honestly, personally, I will go with this any day that ends in a Y because frame rate over everything, even, even resolution. But the fact that we're going to be getting 4K resolution with 60 frames per second in a performance mode is very exciting and it's signs of things to come with this game and first party specifically what they're going to do with this system and that's why I'm going with PlayStation 5 day one it's going to have the best games and the games are the most important thing but also it's going to be hitting 4k and 60 frames per second on the first party titles and a majority of the third party titles so don't let the, the misinformation and fake news out there get you down because this is going to be an amazing system but anyway I want to talk to you guys about it in the comments so if you guys have any comments or questions about anything we talked about put it in the comment section let me know if you're excited for spider-man miles morales well, who's your favorite spider-man villain put it in the comment section i want to talk to you guys so anyway that's it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i enjoyed making it i hope you guys have a great day wherever you guys are around the world i hope you stay safe during these interesting times have fun playing games that's the most important part and as always stay salty my friends